Graphical Analysis of Kinematics in One Dimension. Here's the problem. We have an object moving along a straight line in one dimension, and the velocity as a function of time graph is shown to the right. So here's our velocity on the y-axis, and time is on the x-axis. See how it's labeled? So you have to find the acceleration of the object for several different time intervals, then find the travel distance between t equals 0 and t equals 30 seconds, find its displacement then, and finally graph the position and acceleration of the object between t equals 0 and t equals 30 seconds. Find the acceleration of the object for these various time intervals, and the first thing we're going to notice is it will be constant, because if you look at the velocity time graph, all the pieces are straight lines and the slope of a straight line is always a constant. That means the acceleration will be constant, which means the acceleration at any point is equal to the average acceleration, and that's going to be v final of the interval minus the initial velocity divided by the time. So again, constant acceleration for every one of these pieces, and what we're going to do is, hang on, let's erase that over here, and what we're going to do is pick off the velocities for every time interval. So the first one, at time equals 5, the velocity is 4. Time equals 0, velocity is 0. So let's go to the next slide and start doing that. We'll do the first three intervals, which is 0 to 5, 5 to 10, and then 10 to 15. And here is 0 to 5. You see the velocity at the uh, 5 second point is 4 there's 4. At the 0 second, it's 0. You divide by 5, which is the time interval. It's a 5 second interval. And we get 0.8 meters per second squared. Now, let's go to the next one. This point here, okay, you've got at 10 seconds, it's 4. And also at 5 seconds, it's 4. So, you have 4 minus 4 over 5. That's 0 meters per second squared. What do you notice about this acceleration? Well, it's just the slope of the line, right? Because the average acceleration is equal to the acceleration at any point, so we're just taking the slopes of these various lines. So just looking at this guy without even doing a subtraction, clearly it looks just like this, except it's in the opposite direction. It will have a negative slope. So that will be negative 0.8 meters per second squared. We continue. And we can either go ahead and pick off the points like it is done here, or just use a little, little analysis here. Whatever the slope was here, it's going to be the same here for the 15 to 20 interval. So that'll be negative 0.8 again. Slope here, 0. There you go. And you can see how this line here is parallel here, so it has the same slope. Also 0.8 meters per second squared. We want to find the travel distance of the object from 0 seconds to 30 seconds. On a velocity time curve, you can find the distance and the displacement by taking the area under the curve. Because, let's see, if we have velocity in the y direction, time in the x direction, what's velocity times time? Well, that's just position. So we're going to have one area here, and then we're going to have another one over here. Now, we can't just, well, we can. We can split these into easily recognizable shapes, like there's a triangle, here's another triangle, and here's a rectangle. Or we can recall the trapezoid formula, and that's what we're going to use. It's base 1 plus base 2, and that's here's base 1. You know what, let me erase that again. Here's base 1, here's base 2, divided by 2 times the height. And this will be the height like this. So the area of our first shape over here, the one base is 15, the top is 5, divide by 2, the height is 4, so that area is 40. And 2 is just the mirror image of it, so the area of this is also 40. Now we're talking about the total distance traveled. 
So that doesn't worry about where we start and when we finish. It's just how many steps did we take? How much distance did we cover? So both of these will be positive because if you're walking here, in both cases, you're walking, expending the same energy and your feet are going the same amount of meters. So we're just going to add those two numbers together and our total distance will be 40 plus 40, 80 meters. That's our distance. Displacement, which is what we're finding now, is different than distance. There, it matters what direction we're going in. So in this first case, since we had a positive velocity, we were going in the positive direction and we covered 40 meters, 40 meters. Then what happened? At this point here, we turned around and started heading with a negative velocity. So we're heading back to where we started from and we covered this distance, which is actually a displacement of negative 40 meters. Mathematically, you can see that because what's the height here? Well, the height's negative 4. So if we plug it into the equation and we care about the signs now because it's displacement, our total displacement will be 0. We're back where we started from. This guy here, we spent moving away from our position in the positive direction, turned around at this point, and started moving back with the same types of velocity for the same amounts of time. So we just wound up back where we started. Displacement is zero meters. Let's graph the position now and acceleration of the object. First, we're going to show the position graph over here. And you can see that we started at zero. We went up to 40. Then we came back and we wound up at zero again. But why was the curve shaped like this? Well, let's look at that on the next couple slides. We'll look at the first two pieces between 0 and 5 seconds and 5 and 10 seconds. So for the 0 to 5 piece, oh, sorry about that, the 0 to 5 piece, what's the uh, shape of our velocity? It's a straight line, okay? And we know that position is going to be the integral of the velocity. So let's just say we actually plug numbers in here and found out that the velocity is point a t, right? Because point eight is the slope like we found earlier. So if we integrate that, we get 0.4 t squared. And what kind of shape is that? Well, that's a parabola. So here's our parabola here, okay? And these numbers actually are correct, but you don't have to worry about that. We're really just interested in the shape and how it changes at each five second interval. Okay, so let's erase that and focus on the next section, which is the 5 to 10. Well, that's a straight line. And you can see that the equation on the velocity curve is just v equals 4. So let's go ahead and integ integrate that, and we get 4t. See right over here? That's a straight line. So now we have a straight line like this. So we have a parabola, then a straight line. So we've got the first part of the curve done. So let's go to the next couple slides. We're going to take from 10 to 20 here all at once to figure out its shape. We have a negative slope. So what happens when we have a negative slope on a velocity time curve? That gives us a shape that is concave down. Okay, so we have it like this. All right? And when, what's going to be the peak of that curve? Well, it will be when your velocity is at zero where you go from a positive velocity to a negative velocity. So right at this point here is going to be the peak of our curve. That happens at 15 seconds. What we've also done here is we did, uh, we took a couple points on this line and we found out what the linear equation for that is and you can try that on your own, but you find out that the velocity is minus 0.8t plus 12. You then integrate that to find the position and you get negative 0.4 t squared plus 12 t, a parabolic shape, and that's what we have here. It's concave down because the slope of the line of the velocity curve is negative, and it peaks in the middle where the velocity goes to zero. Another way to look at that to help verify what we've done, again, we're focusing on where v goes to zero, and that's at t is equal to 15 seconds. That applies a maximum for position curve because that's where the slope is zero, right? Because if I look over here, what do I have here? That's a zero slope. So that means that's going to be my maximum. 
right? I take the derivative of that, I get zero. That's the maximum position I get away from where I started. And then let's look at the slope here. Your velocity, not the slope, the actual velocity, it's positive. So that means you need a positive slope for the position curve. And look over here, positive slope everywhere there. Now, from 15 to 20, the velocity is negative, right? It's under the x-axis. So the position curve has a negative slope, just like that. And that's another way of saying concave down. We'll take advantage of the symmetry of this problem. You can already see how this point, these points here, and these points, this is a positive velocity, this is negative. You can see how the one side gave you this, and then the slope reverse for the second slide. Okay, second slide. Down here, that's going to be this point here, because if you take the derivative of this, you'll get a negative slope, which means a negative velocity, and there you go. See how that's all negative? And same with this last point, the parabolic shape. This is having a negative slope also, and this here, velocity is negative the whole time, and of course velocity is the derivative of position, so that checks out. So we have a symmetric shape for the position fitting in to the symmetric shape for the velocity. And you can double check all this by going through here and taking the slopes of each point and seeing if it makes sense. So let's just take one example at the peak, 15 seconds. What's the slope there? Zero. So what do we have here in a velocity curve? Zero. Over here, we have all positive slopes. Okay. So that's that, okay? This is positive now. Note that this right here is negative, but the slope of this, is, of this point here is negative, but the value of velocity is still positive, so don't get confused. So everybody over here has positive slopes, so the velocity has to be positive. This side, the velocity will be negative, and that checks out. So let me just erase all that so we can look. Is there anything else we can see there? Yeah, one more thing. If we take the slope of a parabola, right, a t squared, you're going to get a straight line. There you go. We have a straight line, so that's good. And then from 5 to 10, right, you take the derivative of this, you get a constant. There's your constant, constant value of 4. That's the slope. So it does check out there, and you can go check out the other intervals and make sure that the derivative of every point here matches with the velocity. Your reward for calculating the position graph is to do the acceleration graph, which is much, much simpler. So actually, if you had this on an exam, do the acceleration first. It's always easier to graph the derivative of something than to go through the integral, as you found out over the, next four, over the previous four or five slides. And let's note that whenever an object's velocity is represented by a linear function, so let's show what we mean by there. Let's say v is equal to 3t, linear function of t. The acceleration will be constant, right? The derivative of 3t is just 3. Instantaneous acceleration, therefore, is equal to average acceleration. So basically, we're plotting the answer that we had for part a. So here we go. What's the slope? from 0 to 5, right? Because that gives you the acceleration. Well, that's 0.8 meters per second squared. There you go. Then you have a discontinuity at 5, right? Where it goes down to a 0 slope between 5 and 10 seconds, and that's this. So the way to represent that is draw the heavy lines in and then put a very light dashed line here. Now, that is really not physically what happens. That's impossible. That would take an infinite force to change your acceleration in no time at all. So it, it does actually curve something like this to get up there. But we're not going to worry about that. In this case, we can just draw the, uh, the absolute perfection here, which can't happen. And note, between 10 seconds and 20, you have the same slope, right, of negative 0.8. Here it is. And we've got these little lines to help you hook up with it, so you draw it straight. So one more time, I'll remind you, if you get this type of question on an exam, please do the acceleration curve first, right? It's a heck of a lot easier, and uh, you'd hate to run out of time and not do this one, because if you're going to make a mistake, it'll be on the integration, not the derivative. So do the acceleration first, 
Plus, it helps build up confidence when you can attack the next problem. So that's the answer to this one.